Good afternoon and welcome to Smart Music's webinar, Upbeat Mindset for Downbeat Times with Dr. Matthew Arau. My name is Michaela Graham, Senior Event Specialist for Make Music, and I will be running everything in the background for our session today. Before we get started, I have just a couple of housekeeping notes for you. At the end of the webinar, we will provide a link to the certificate of attendance for today's session, as well as a handout from the presenter. Please note the certificate of attendance will only be available for live attendees and not for the replay. If you have any questions for our presenter throughout the session, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. We love hearing your thoughts throughout the presentation, and we will have time for Q&A at the end of today's session. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenter today. Dr. Matthew Arau, founder of Upbeat Global, is the chair of the Music Education Department and Associate Director of Bands at the Lawrence University Conservatory of Music in Appleton, Wisconsin. In addition, Dr. Rao is on the graduate faculty of the American Band College of Central Washington University and Vandercook College of Music. He also serves as a Conselmer education clinician and as member at large on the NAFME Council for Band Education. Dr. Rao, thank you so much for being with us today. I will let you take it away. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Michaela, for that real warm introduction and thank you to everybody. Uh, for joining me today for some time just to maybe decompress, to, to refresh. And why don't we just begin with, with a renewing breath. Uh, an inhale in our nose, renew and exhale, release through our mouth. I'll lead you through that. So renew and exhale, release. And just shake it out. Hey, this is going to be some special time. I'm going to be sharing some ideas and, and strategies for us all because we've certainly been in, in this together for going on about a year today. And this session is titled Upbeat Mindset for Downbeat Times. So welcome. I'm really glad that you're joining us. And I hope that I'm able to provide value for you and that you'll be able to take and bring to your students as well. So my purpose, my intention, I always like to set an intention for a webinar or a presentation. My goal is to help us all refresh, recharge, renew, reset, reimagine, and ultimately reignite that spark within. I was thinking, you know, we spend so much time tuning up our ensembles, don't we? We spend so much time with, you know, with the tuning note and really listening and balancing chords and harmonies and, and the octaves and, and everything we can to, to make the intonation as pristine as possible. But oftentimes we forget about tuning our most important instrument, which is ourselves, which is you. So I hope that today's session provides a pathway forward to fine tune your mind, body, and spirit. Well, this is titled Upbeat Mindset for Downbeat Times, but let's acknowledge that it's been tough. And I don't think it would be you know, right to, to just plunge forward and, and share ideas on, on raising our, our positivity and, and creating an upbeat mindset without acknowledging the challenges we've all faced. And we've certainly felt a, our fair share of stress, anxiety, and grief over the many months. And we've we and our students and family members have felt senses of loss, trauma, and lack of control. It certainly often felt like there's been a dark cloud, hasn't it, right? But I always like to think that above the clouds, there is a light. And, and I hope that we're all feeling that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Certainly, our life has changed so much, hasn't it? Uh, but I believe that our why has not changed. And I just kind of think about that for a moment yeah, we all figured out new ways to teach music and, and to, to connect with our students and to show care and compassion. But in what ways has your why changed, if, if at all? And, and maybe it has, maybe it has. Maybe it was uh, more centered in one particular area before when, when concerts and competitions were the focus. And, but, but now maybe we're focusing more on social emotional learning or mindfulness or, or just really connecting with our students and being like, are you okay? And, and checking in. I'd love it if you want to just jump into the chat and share your why 
for, for teaching music or, or for sharing your musicianship with others. And even comment, has it, has it changed or has it not changed? And I, I think both are absolutely valid. We can all agree that certainly we've discovered new pathways and, and many of those new pathways I think are here to stay. I think there's things that we've created along the way, asynchronous videos and all those Google forms. And, 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 and this is a smart music webinar. So many of us maybe started engaging with smart music for the first time and, and found it highly valuable. But what are those new pathways that you think are gonna stay even as we move beyond uh, this pandemic time? And I think that'd be a really great thing just, just to be thinking about today. So let me share a little bit about what do I mean by an upbeat mindset? Well, like many of us here, I love conducting, right? I have the opportunity to conduct at my university. I used to be a band director in Colorado. I taught middle school band for eight years at Walt Clark Middle School in Loveland. And uh, then I was the high school band director at Loveland High School for seven years. And then did my doctorate degree in conducting. So I just have this passion for conducting. And as a conductor, I I've realized that we can choose our own upbeat, right? Isn't that one of the wonderful things as a conductor? We visualize the score and, and we take it in and we hear the sound, right? And then we get in front of the orchestra, the choir, the band, the, the ensemble, any ensemble, and, and we hear that sound before it happens. And we give the upbeat to the piece, followed by the downbeat, right? And as we change our upbeat, the downbeat changes, right? And really as our conception of sound changes, the sound of the downbeat also changes. And you can just experiment with this at home, try like a forte one, right? Or piano, just, right? And our, as our upbeat changes, the downbeat changes. But let's go ahead and take a look at a variety of conductors here. And, and notice how the passion and excitement for, for each conductor, they're bringing out like a different spirit. It's like their spirit within is being conveyed to the, to the, the orchestra or the ensemble, right? And different, different gestures elicit different tones and different sounds. And you can almost imagine the sound that the conductor hears in their mind, right? They're, as they're giving the upbeat, what do you think the ensemble sound is gonna be? And I always like to pause for a moment with one of my favorites, Gustavo Dudamel, right? He just wears his passion on his sleeve, right? In this upbeat, this preparatory beat. And here's Alan Gilbert. Alan Gilbert was the conductor of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra for many years. And he wrote in an article once, he said, the upbeat is the preparation for any event. Isn't that powerful? The upbeat is the preparation for any event. Well, that's actually what got me thinking so much about this idea of the upbeat, because if the upbeat is the preparation for any event, let's, let's go way beyond, let's take this metaphor outside even of music. I started thinking, you know what? In football, the throw is the upbeat that catches the downbeat. In basketball, the shot is the upbeat, the swish is the downbeat. In track and field relays, the, the handoff of the baton is the upbeat, the catch is the downbeat, right? The way the band, choir, orchestra, mariachi ensemble, uh, any group takes the stage, right? Is the upbeat for the performance. The way the marching band takes the field is the upbeat for their performance. The attitude that we wake up with in the morning is our upbeat to the day. Our, our attitude and, and, and thoughts as we enter our our classroom, we open the door or we turn on the computer to our, to our, our virtual space, the attitude that we begin and even approach the class is the upbeat to how well the class will go. Is that fascinating? But what's the power of the upbeat is that we get to choose our upbeat. And this is what's so powerful. See, our thoughts are the upbeats to our actions. And it all begins with our thoughts, but who's in control of our thoughts? We are. And our attitude is our upbeat to any situation. And, and, and I truly mean this, even in the darkest times, we choose our attitude. We choose our response to challenge, right? And, and this is amazing. And it actually allows us to keep that sense of control 
because ultimately we choose our thoughts and our attitude. And uh, just want to want to comment in, in, in about the chat here. And, and I love Amanda. Hi, Amanda from Chatech, Wisconsin. She says, I don't feel my why for teaching has changed. If anything, it has made my why even stronger. Go ahead and raise your hand or, or comment in the chat. If, if you're there with Amanda, th these challenging times has actually made your sense of purpose even stronger uh, during when, when we've been stretched and our students have been stretched. And I'm getting a lot of amen. All right, absolutely, definitely. Isn't that fascinating that sometimes in struggle and crisis is actually the time that we, we grow the most. And, and that's hard to realize, I think, in the moment. Wouldn't you agree? When you're going through the struggle, it's hard to step back and say like, hey, what a nice learning opportunity this is. I, I think we're oftentimes in survival mode. And, and give me like an amen to that if you felt like you've been in survival mode. Uh, throughout this time a lot, right? I think that we've had to create so many new things and, and how many of you, you know, even veterans that are here today, like, wow, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> yes, Selena, yes, Lord, right? Yeah, so, yep, and, and, and I'm right there with you. I, I've been teaching virtually since, you know, since mid-March and, and I understand all the new challenges that, that, we, that we've had, so thank you. Uh, we are definitely in this journey together, folks. I want to share that how we lead others is a reflection of how we lead ourselves. And this is really interesting to, to reflect on because, you know, raise your hand or, or shout in the chat if you think it's important to treat others with kindness. Do you think it's important to, to show compassion to others? Do you think it's important to forgive others? Uh, do you think it's important to, to lead with like seek first to understand, right? And to lead with empathy, right? And Emily says, yes, because you don't know what their day has been like. And that is so true. That is so true. But what I want to share with you is that I think while we as teachers and as human beings and, and and parents and family members and friends, we, we understand this idea that it's important to lead uh, with kindness. But I want to share that often we don't give ourselves the same grace. Would you agree that we're often harder on ourselves than, than we are on others? And that we might show kindness to others when we don't show kindness to ourselves. And I want to bring this up because the research and science shows that the average human being, or our average way of self-talk is 80% negative. So when we're talking to ourselves, and we all do, right? it's not just voices in our head, but when we're talking to ourselves, when we're, we're talking to ourselves and about ourselves, 80% of those thoughts and ideas are negative on average. And if that's the case, it's really difficult to to be as compassionate, as kind with others if we're not giving that to ourselves. And so with that knowledge, we can begin to create new habits and new practices and new routines to change our self-talk so that we can treat ourselves with the same level of kindness and compassion that we would expect ourselves to give to others. And I think that's really, really powerful as we think about uh, our mindset today. So we all have habits of thought and they, they develop throughout our lifetime and, and changing our habits is really difficult. And I bring this up, we often have scripts and scripts are how we respond or react to certain things that happen in our lives. I talk to a lot of students. I teach a lot of student leadership programs and I'll, I'll share like, how do you respond when, when one of your parents says, go clean your room, <laughs> right? You probably respond with this, gosh every time, right? And that's a habit. That's a script. And I said, well, does that help you? Does that serve you? Does that feel good every time? What if you could change your script and be like, yep, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to get it done. And I'm going to surprise the heck out of them. And let's see what happens. And habits are, are created. We often don't even realize they're being created and they are difficult to change, but with practice, we can change them. And I always share that changing a habit is, is similar to this. So everybody take your hands and clasp them together. And, and so however you did this, this is actually your habit. This is a metaphor of habit, something familiar. 
Um, this is your comfort zone, right? But let's go ahead and now take our hands and, and go beyond and, and switch out every other finger. So now your other thumb's on top. Okay, so go ahead and try that with me. And uh, some of you might be responding, whoa, this is unusual, strange, right? It, it, it feels maybe sticky or icky, right? And this is what it feels like to create a new habit. Let's go back home where it feels good. Okay, <sighs> everybody breathe a sigh of relief. Whew. Okay, so this is your habit. Now let's stretch and, and go to unfamiliar territory. This is what it feels like to stretch and get out of our comfort zone. But remember, in order to grow, we need to struggle and get out of our comfort zone. And this is also what we're asking our students to do. Go ahead and take your arms and cross them. And take a look now at your arms. See which one's on top. Is it your left or your, your right arm, left or right arm? And whatever that is, that's your habit. Okay, now let's, let's figure this out together. Go ahead and take your arms and switch them out. Put the other arm on top, see what that feels like. Wow, okay, so this feels really unfamiliar for sure. Out of our comfort zone, definitely uh, what it feels like to create a new habit. And habits, new habits take practice to develop. As you're sitting here in this unfamiliar territory, I just want you to uh, realize something. Every person and everything in your life that is familiar to you now was at one point unfamiliar, right? With people, it took somebody uh, to, to reach out to us, right? And, and say, hey, join me, or hey, what's your name? Or to ask you how you are and, and sincerely care and, and wait for the response, right? And, and, and our thoughts are the same way. We, we have habits of thought and, that are created and we respond the same way almost every single time. In fact, every, every day, the average human being thinks 50,000 to 60,000 different thoughts. That's a lot of thoughts, but 95% of those thoughts are the same thoughts we thought yesterday, the day before, the day before that, and the day before that. Wow. But what I've realized is if we're going to change our mindset, if we're going to change our life, it actually begins with changing our thoughts. So this is really, really powerful to know. And so I hope that, uh, I didn't stretch you too far by, by flipping up the hands and flipping up the arms. I know that can be uh, a, a new challenge, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You can do it with your students too. So let's talk about how can we move our, our mindset that might be overwhelmed with stress and anxiety now, but how can we embrace what I call the power of positivity? And why is it advantageous to attempt to do that? So in, in brain science and neuroscience, uh, we've studied that when, when we are stressed or anxious or filled with fear or frustrated or angry, uh, the amygdala in, in our brain, right? some people call it the reptile brain, uh, kind of takes over, right? Sometimes call it like uh, amygdala hijack. And what happens is it shuts down the, the neocortex and the prefrontal cortex. Why that matters is this part of our brain, the neocortex and prefrontal cortex, is the, the area of our brain that allows us to be creative, solution finders, uh, team players, uh, we're more intelligent, we're physically more, uh, we're stronger, our, our immune system goes up, like everything we want, and everything we want as a teacher uh, is, is rolling in here when that area gets stimulated, but when the amygdala shuts it down, we're unable to access that, and what I'll say is it's hard for us to be the best version of ourselves, and I think we know that when we're, when we're stressed or anxious, we get real tight, right, and, and, and our focus gets really, really narrow. What's great about moving into the positive realm is it actually broadens what are our viewpoint? It broadens possibilities. We start to see possibilities that we hadn't seen before. We start to see creative solutions. So now when we're in a challenge, we start thinking, okay, I got this challenge. Now, what am I going to do to work my way through this? Now, what's amazing is that music educators, we are creative and solution finders. And what we've done as a profession in the last year is miraculous, right? So pat on the back, music educators, right? Um, for, for making that change. But this is on a daily basis. How can we help ourselves get into that, that positive realm? Now, every second, the human brain takes in 11 million bits of information, but we are only conscious of 40 bits, right? That's, that's amazing. We're only conscious of 40 bits. But I always say like, what if you could choose what you focus on? Right? Out of those 11 million bits every second, We've, we've developed kind of habits of what we tend to focus on. And sometimes those are for survival instinct, right? When maybe in the past we would be getting chased by a saber toothed tiger is really important to like run and, and uh, not like stop and pet the saber toothed tiger. But it's really important for us to be able to, in the full spectrum of things that are coming at us, find ways to focus on what is good in the world and also find a way to choose our response. I'm going to be sharing some strategies to help us get there as we move forward. 
I want to share, I just talked about choosing our response. I actually want to share with you a, a story for me that happened relatively recently where I was challenged to choose my response. Okay, so go with me on this one. It was September 12th, 2020, September 12, 2020. And uh, I, I live in Wisconsin. And that day, it was a fall day, and I get up early in the morning, have this routine, like tea and meditate. And, and uh, uh, I was going swimming. We have a pool, so I was going swimming uh, uh, normally. And I knew we were going to about to close up our pool because it starts to get really cold in Wisconsin. But this day, September 12, was really dreary and gloomy and dark outside, cold for a September day, raining. And I, I was like, I am... I do not want to go outside. I knew I should. I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go outside swimming. And uh, instead I, I got out a, a notebook and I just, I just started writing, started journaling. And I'll, I'll do this on occasion. I wrote September 12, 2020. And I started writing and I, because it was September 12, I actually started reflecting on the day before. Uh, September 11. Only I wasn't thinking of September 11, 2020, I was thinking of 9 11, 2001. And I started recalling that day and writing about it. And I was in my fourth year of teaching, or fifth, fourth or fifth year of teaching. I was a middle school band director. And those of you that are on this, on this call, you, and you, if you're old enough and you were a teacher on that day, you know. Everybody had, has our own story, right? Our own challenge. And in Colorado, with the timing and everything, um, I was teaching my sixth grade bands in the morning blocks and we were watching the television and we, we saw both towers crumble. And of course, nothing could have prepared us for this. Like there was no training for teachers to prepare us for this. I was thinking about how there was no training for for teachers to prepare us for, for what's happened with, with the COVID pandemic, right? And it was it was a really hard day. My, my younger brother, Javier, had just moved to New York City with his wife, Kelly, three days before 9-11, and we couldn't get a hold of him, and, and um, that was really hard. But after lunch, the seventh grade band, bands, we have two bands, and they, they came in after lunch, and they, and they said, Hey, can we just play music in class today? Like they were so just mentally and emotionally exhausted from watching TV and all their other classes. And I said, absolutely, let's play music. And they, they got their instruments out and we had the Essential Elements 2000, book two for the seventh grade band. And as the falls at the very beginning of the year, you know, and we, we opened it up and it turns out that number six in the book is, is America. Um, da, da, di, da, da, di, da, 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 di, da, da, di, da, da, di. And that's what it was. And three, four, and six measures. And I think we played that short piece probably 15, 20 times in a row. And then when the eighth grade band came in, they already had a piece in their folder. It happened to be Amazing Grace, an arrangement of Amazing Grace. I think we played that piece seven times. Da -di -da -da -di -da -di -da. And that day, we were so thankful and grateful to have music in our lives. Certainly, there, we could not express our thoughts with words that day. And the power of music was, was never more apparent to me up until that point in my life with those experiences. And I was writing about this on September 12, 2020, reflecting on 9-11. And then I started making what I'd call a to-do list. But what do I normally call a to-do list, right? And maybe many of you do this in the morning. We have so many things to do. I, you know how we're, we're doing, doing, doing. Have you ever thought that, that we're almost like a human doing, but we're meant to be a human being. Isn't that interesting? Well, I, I was making a list of, 
of all these things I, I, I needed to do, but I, I was transformed by my journaling. And instead of writing a to-do list, it became a get to-do list. I, I literally had the same things I would normally have on a to-do list, but these became get to do. I get to call this person. I get to answer these emails. I get to teach these classes. I get to prepare for this. I get to do that. I get to do this. I get to do that. And everything was get to. And then I started getting a little silly. I said, I get to go out and dance in the rain. I get to dive in the pool during the rainstorm and swim. Don't worry, there wasn't any lightning or anything like that. And, and you know what? I felt fired up because I was writing everything I get to do. And I, and I did go outside and I did dance in the rain and I dove in the swimming pool and I'm swimming in the pool and I'm thinking all this stuff I get to, I get to, I get to. And I'm telling you, I was getting these spikes of dopamine at, while, I'm, while I'm swimming. And I was thinking, you know what? Get, G-E-T, G-E-T, G-E-T. Wow, this is like the power of yet, right? Carol Dweck's idea of the power of yet, which is, is amazingly powerful, right? We're not there yet. It's, it's a hopeful word, right? It's about the future. It shows that we believe in our students that they can get there or we can talk to ourselves. We're not there yet it means like, I think I'm gonna get there, right? Just need more strategies and more time and more effort to put into it. I'm gonna get there. But you know what? I realized the word get has its own power. And I wanna share that with you because the word get, when you think about what you get to do today, even if it's the same stuff you've always been doing, it changes everything. Even in a pandemic, if you start to think, I get to communicate with my students, right? I get to communicate with my students, even over Zoom or Google Meet. How powerful is that? 10 years ago, we wouldn't be able to do this, right? Imagine finding ways to connect with our students with, without the technology that we have today. And then I started thinking, but this is a three-letter word. What power is there in these three letters? And I realized that those three letters have meaning. And the first is G for, for gratitude. And when we focus on what we're grateful for, we focus on, on the, the things in our life that, that we do have or that we get to do, that actually starts to shift our mindset from, from the unwanted emotions towards the wanted emotions. So what we've learned is that we can't multitask. We can't even multitask emotions. We actually toggle. We toggle back and forth. But if you can intentionally focus on what you're grateful for, you'll start to see more in your, in your viewpoint, of more things that you're grateful for. And they'll start to just enter into your life. And then I realize E, enthusiasm. If we can do it with the spirit, an extraordinary spirit to live life with enthusiasm as, you know, as if we just have this day. What if you just had this day? How would you live it? And then finally, treasure. And I started realizing everything is something to treasure if you, if you can wrap your mind around it. Like even this, this glass and this water within it, clean drinking water from the faucet and how I get to drink clean water. And there, there are many, many people on our planet that do not have the privilege to be able to drink clean water. So I hope that you'll take that idea of the power of get into your life. Well, I, I've shared some ideas of shifting into this positive realm and its benefits, but and focusing on gratitude is one of the strategies, but also focusing on our breathing is really powerful. And I wanna, I wanna share why. So when we are stressed or anxious or fearful or angry, our breathing changes physiologically. Our breathing is actually tied to our emotions. That's really powerful. And you should think about it, you'll re recognize that is in fact the case. So what we've learned uh, is that rather than intentionally trying to just change your emotions at will, it's actually easier to change your breathing. And as you change your breathing, then you can address uh, shifting your feelings towards maybe the, that realm where, where you feel better. Because that's the whole goal. So we just want to feel better from wherever we are. And we're not going to leap from, from grief to joy. We're just going to climb up this ladder of emotion. So just going to take where we are and lean into that, acknowledge that non-judgmentally, like this is how I feel, but I want to feel better. And here's some strategies to help you move to that uh, space. And, and so I'm going to share some, some breathing concepts with us, with all of you. This is called the focus breath. And you can use this with your ensembles. It's, it's really powerful. And uh, I use it with, with my groups all the time. <laughs> I mean, e even in the virtual space I do, but uh, before I'd always with, with live ensembles use this. So let's do this together. In our nose for four, out our nose for four. We'll do it two times. Just relax everything. I want you to, as you're doing it, listen to the sound of the room that you're in. Here we go. In. 
out and in and out and shake it out. The next breath I want to share is called the serenity breath. This is a breath if, if you're really, really tight. This is so powerful. Let's do it one time. In your nose for four, hold for seven, and then out your mouth for eight. Here we go. And in, hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, out. Relax. The triangle breath is in your nose for three, hold for three, out your mouth for three. This is a great breath, particularly if you have trouble sleeping and uh, you're doing this as you're lying in your bed, you wake up in the middle of the night, hey, you have trouble going back to sleep. This one works really well. The next one's called the box breath. This is also used by the Navy SEALs and they swear by it. And uh, it's, it's also a really powerful grounding breath. So in your nose for four, hold for four, out your mouth for four, hold for four, and then repeat. And uh, the next breath we're actually going to do together, yeah, I call the gratitude breath. We're going to focus on something that you're grateful for and breathe that in for four counts through your nose and then exhale out all the toxic stress, anxiety, anything you just want to expel, just release it all out your mouth for eight. Okay. So uh, focus on something that you're grateful for, maybe, maybe some family members, a loved one, a pet, uh, your students. Uh, the ability to connect and interface in, 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 in ways like we are right now, right? Uh, so, so whatever is important to you or that you're, you've, you appreciate, focus on that. Breathe that in and then exhale what you want to get rid of. Go in for four, here. Exhale. Again and in. Release. Wow. And go ahead and in the chat, go ahead and write down if you feel comfortable. Um, go ahead and uh, write what you what you put down for what you're grateful for. What are you grateful for? And I'll share what I'm grateful for. And I'm thinking about right now is our our dog <laughs> that we we rescued from a pet rescue uh, in January uh, 2020. Her name's Olive. And my wife and I love her to death. We're so grateful to have her in our lives. And, and thank you, Denny. Uh, shared tremendous family, being alive, my wife and two daughters, living in America, life, every breath, right? Every breath that we're alive, so powerful. And so here, here's all the breaths. If you wanna take a screenshot, you're welcome. I also wanna share that in the handout that you'll receive at the end, for those of you that have registered for this, uh, you'll receive a handout, okay? I'm gonna move on now and share that this power of gratitude is, is, is pretty amazing. When you have an attitude of gratitude, you start to notice more things that you're grateful for, but it also becomes contagious. Have you noticed that? Like when you feel gratitude and you share it with others, it's like passing it on. It's like throwing a pebble into a lake and the ripples keep going and going. In fact, we might not even know where our... Uh, influence stops, right? It could just go on and on and on and on, which is just amazing. We can also change the way we think about things that we do normally throughout the day. So one of the things I think we all do in the morning is, is wake up in the morning, but most of us wake up to, right, an alarm clock and often on our phone. But I want to share a different way of thinking about even the moment upon waking in the morning, because I think there's a way that we can supercharge our morning. And I've actually talked about this in, in, in one of the smart music articles uh, that, that I've written. So uh, I know we're going to be sharing some of the smart music articles in, in the chat along the way. But uh, so there's a lot more to this. But if you can decide to wake up to an opportunity clock instead of an alarm clock, just realizing that, well, this is an opportunity every day, every morning, every time I, I get to wake up, I have this opportunity for this day. Now, there are things that we can do beyond just developing a new habit, we can also realize that if we intentionally focus on joy, something that brings us joy, gratitude, or comfort, 
or something we're looking forward to that day upon waking up and then focus on those thoughts for 17 seconds. That's enough time for those thoughts to become sticky. And, and sticky thoughts are similar to when we put in music into Pandora or Spotify and we put in an artist or an instrument or, or something that, that, that we really like. And then it starts to, the, the, the app starts to attract other music like that or similar artists like that. And sometimes we discover something we had never knew before. And that's how we, we learn some new music or some new artists. And that's really fantastic. Our thoughts are the same way. And, and you know this to be true if you like wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you, when you stub your toe and then you spill your coffee and everything goes wrong, right? That's the same way with positivity, but you can be intentional about it, but you got to practice. <laughs> so if, if you have a habit like I did, this is why I'm so fascinated with this stuff because I had all those habits, right? Of like, oh my God, snooze. Do I really have to get up. And, and when I first learned of this idea of the opportunity clock, I said, that's amazing. I'm going to really work hard on that. And now I, I, I programmed myself because it's through so much practice to, to wake up in the morning. And, and when I woke up this morning, the first thought I had was, you got this. <laughs> See, I'm talking to myself. You got this. You got this. And, and that's the first, you got this. Just you got this. You got this day. It's going to be incredible. You have this amazing opportunity to share with, with musicians and music educators uh, around, around the country and around the world through the Smart Music uh, webinar today. And I, I just focused on that as I woke up. And then just one more positive thing leads to one more positive thing. So I just want to share that with you, uh, that, that you can intentionally begin to blueprint and compose the day you want to have. So we don't have to be like a, a pinball, <laughs> like the, you know, the, those silver balls in the pinball machine that just get bounced around like almost at, willy nilly, right? And sometimes our lives feel that way, like our life happens to us. What I'm sharing is that we can intentionally compose our day. And when you can compose our day and visualize the day you want to create, obviously you can't predict everything that's going to happen in the day, but you can decide what kind of day do I want to have? What kind of difference do I want to have? And if you start to set your intention in the morning, then you're on the path to starting to, to make those things happen and attract them into your life. So we no longer need to just accept the weather, <laughs> the, the metaphorical weather of the room or the classroom or as a thermometer just measures the weather. We can actually be a thermostat and change the weather, which is so powerful. And, and that's what I wanna share. If we can move along in, in that spectrum from feeling like, woe is me, things are happening to me and I have no control to start to realize, yes, we do. The thing we do control is our freedom of thought, our freedom of attitude. We can choose our attitude. We also can choose our mindset. Now, this isn't always easy, right? Um, because our, our mindset has been often determined you know, from an early age as people start to share things with us, particularly when we entered school and we started getting judged. We started getting grades in school and, and you know, there was peer pressure and society started saying things to us. We started getting labeled as good at things and not good at things. And we started to believe those things that were said about us. But what we now know, thanks to the research of Carol Dweck, is that we can actually change our mindset from a fixed mindset, which is, I'm not good at that, so I'm not going to try. Or I've been told that I'm really good at something, so, but I'm not going to take on a new challenge to undo that identity that I have. That's the danger of even telling somebody that they're talented because then they are gonna lose that drive often to go for the higher challenge because they don't wanna disappoint or fail, right? It's that fear of failure. But growth mindset says, hey, I'm gonna embrace the challenge. I'm gonna go for it. And if there's ever been a time for growth mindset, I think it's now, wouldn't you agree? And, and, and uh, also, let me just say, I applaud you all for the growth mindsets that you've all shown. Certainly you might be thinking, well, I haven't always had a growth mindset throughout this. But if you think about in the large, the long scope of this, you all have had incredible mindsets to persevere, right? To persevere. You're here today because you care. And I think that says so much about you. You know, growth mindset does not mean that life will be smooth sailing from here on out. In fact, it is in the choppy waves and gale force winds where we become a better sailor. With a growth mindset, we call out to the thunder and the dark clouds and we say, 
Bring it. Is this the best you got? We may careen, pitch to the side, and even capsize, but we will recover and get back up and charge forth relentlessly. A growth mindset reminds us that struggle is part of the game of life. We may be afraid and fear the unknown, but we will not cower and hide from challenge. We will embrace it and stare it in the eye and say to ourselves, you got this. In addition to breathing, gratitude, uh, focusing on, on our attitude and our personal upbeat and choosing our thoughts, we can also choose to be mindful of the present moment. And, and that really ties in with this idea of get and to treasure the moment, right? And mindfulness is a practice of heightening our awareness and an awareness of our feelings, an awareness of our senses, even beyond our five senses, even uh, our, our sense of, of within, right? And even just that, that in, introspection aspect of mindfulness. Another word for mindfulness that helps to, to really embrace the concept is to think of it as awareness sing. It's about being so present in the moment that you, the colors are more vibrant because you choose to see it that way or you choose to go for a walk wherever you live and you start to, you choose to see things with what's called a beginner's mindset. And you start to look at things with a sense of awe as opposed to mundaneness or banality. Think, oh, we've done this before. Or every time I drive to work, it's the same thing. What if you chose to see it anew? And, and that's why mindfulness has this idea of like focusing on our breath, right? Because when we can bring ourselves to just focus on our breath, that's actually heightening our awareness. So that's why oftentimes mindfulness and meditation go together. But mindfulness is, is more than meditation. Mindfulness is, is being present. And instead of thinking about what, what you have to do next, it's like when a student comes to talk to us, being fully present with them and, and eye to eye and heart to heart is an act of mindfulness. And this is something that we can choose to do, but I want to share, it's a practice. <laughs> so we never, we never master mindfulness. I mean, we can choose to be mindful when we're eating and, 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 and savor it, right? Rather than always looking at our phone and scrolling, which, which I'm as guilty as anybody, right? But I'm always working on it. I'm trying, trying to develop my practice of mindfulness so that I can get more out of each moment. Find times for personal reflection. And I hope that even this session today has given you some, some thoughts and maybe you've taken this time for yourself to personally reflect. And, and to, to maybe just right now, take, take a moment and look away from the computer. <laughs> And just like look to your right and see what you see in your space. Maybe notice some things in a new way that you haven't noticed before. Just kind of take it in and then turn to your left. And, and, and what do you notice over here? Maybe you've like really never noticed something before. That's an act of heightening our awareness. And we can bring this into our musicianship, right? And heighten our listening. I always say like if we could listen to each other with as human beings with the sense of awareness and, and heightened listening that we do as, as musicians, imagine how much more we could get along. Imagine the problems we could solve together if we'd listen to each other as musicians do. The idea of being in the present is so powerful because we're often obsessed with the past, right? And oftentimes when we think about the past, that, that brings a sense of guilt and shame in our life, right? And oftentimes when we're thinking about the future, it, that's, that's actually a sense of worry. It's like something we can't control. We can't change the past. We can't control the future. The present is really what we have. And that's why they call the present a gift. And I just love that. Like, it's not just a cool saying, like the present is a gift. Yes, it is. And we only have this moment. Like this moment now is the only thing we can be sure of. And I do believe that a meditation is powerful. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Denny, for the encouragement in, in the chat. I really appreciate it. Meditation is something I do encourage uh, teachers to do and, and, and musicians to, I call it investing in yourself and, and even just like begin with five minutes in the morning and just breathe through your nose, exhale out your mouth, just focus on your breath. And there's so many apps now, right? There's calm, there's headspace, there's waking up. There's, there's so many, uh, free things on YouTube. Uh, there's a release meditation, Brendan Burchard, 
there's there's Wayne Dyer meditations on 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 the web, and if you want to have a guided meditation, or you can just meditate in silence. And here's my dog, our dog Olive, whom I shared I was grateful for. So this is shortly after uh, we'd had her for about three or four months. So this is during the pandemic and she, she loves the sun and she evidently <laughs> loves my lap too. So my wife took that picture <laughs> while I was, I was trying to meditate at that point. But, you know, just begin with five minutes. I think if you can build up to 15, 20 minutes, that's awesome. But don't, don't feel that pressure. And you're going to have thoughts going through your mind all the time and just realize that's normal and be not judgmental and just accept them like, oh, it's just a thought. I accept it. And then it moves on. I encourage us all to, instead of just waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, another day, start to think about the day you want to create, visualize it, just like an athlete visualizes the competition or the race before it happens. That's what we can do as, as musicians and teachers and also set your intention. So set your intention for the difference you want to make, not just in the morning, but through the segments in your day, right? So you might have like this morning but you have a morning routine, maybe you work out, you have your coffee, that kind of thing. You, you know, you interact with your spouse, maybe the kids, that kind of thing. Maybe then, then you might be taking the kids to, to school or, or you're just walking down the hallway and turning on the computer and, and teaching your class. And then that's a new, set your intention for the class, right? And then the class ends and then set your intention for maybe the next interaction you're going to have. But so we have segments throughout the day and we can proactively be intentional about uh, who we want to be in the present moment. And uh, as, as we're coming uh, towards the close of this webinar, I want to share what I call pandemic hacks with you. These have been really helpful to me, and, and I think they can be really helpful to all of us. So the more water you can drink, in fact, if you drink a, a glass of water like this upon waking, that's going to be really, really powerful to start giving you energy first thing in the morning because we always wake up dehydrated. Strive for eight hours of sleep. I know some of you are thinking like, no way. Yes, way. Stop watching Netflix. We can do it, right? Deep breathing. Read for growth and joy. I, I just such a believer in that. Like read, like read uplifting books. Here's a book called Broadcasting Happiness by Michelle Galan. And it's just amazing. It talks about how we are all broadcasters, not just television broadcasters get to do that. We all get to take mindful walks. Think about the walks you do that, or maybe just about the exercise or getting it done. I got to do the walk. Instead, in the walk, take it all in, right? And go to nature wherever you live, right? Be in the now. Meditation, affirmations, change your self-talk. Share like, I can do it, right? You got this. I can do it, all right? I, I believe in myself. I'm going to make a difference today. A gratitude journal. Even just writing three things you're grateful for every day and putting them in, in writing. Because when we write, it actually ignites the prefrontal cortex also. And, and when, we're, when we're writing about what we're grateful for, we start to remember that. And you actually experience the event two times, one writing it and one thinking it. It's amazing. Exercise, oxygen to the brain, right? Makes us feel better. Nutrition, right? We all know this, but we don't all do it. If we can really focus on eating well, it'll change the way we feel physically and then change the way we feel mentally. Mental nutrition, I share, hey, what you put in your body and your mind is going to affect the way you think. How often are, are you watching the news, <laughs> right? I would say, take a fast, <laughs> take a fast away from it because it tends to be so, so negative, right? That, that affects our mindset. Set your intention, find love, right? And, and, and love can be love for another person or, or love for what you do. Just embrace love. Smiling, smiling is contagious. When you smile, it, it sends great things and in, in, uh, great uh, chemicals like uh, dopamine and endorphins through our mind and allows us to actually uh, be in that positive state simply by smiling. Laughter, gosh, we need that. We need that so much, right? So, so find ways to bring laughter into your life. Hugs, mindful hugs, really breathe into them meaningfully. Share your appreciation with others. Find moments of repose and silence, right? Find that, that caesura, that moment of just to pause and appreciate silence. Visualize, create, right? Maybe get your instruments out or compose or, or a, a hobby, build things. Um, and ultimately, uh, or naturally, music. Right? And listen to the music that brought you here in the first place, right? So I'm going to leave us with what I call an upbeat mindset challenge, okay? And, and some of this stuff was in, in the article that was uh, published, published by Smart Music, which is the power of the upbeat strategies for 2021 and beyond. 
but I'm gonna give them to you here. Wake up to your opportunity clock and focus on joy, gratitude, comfort, or what you are looking forward to that day. Start that tomorrow. You will feel a difference. Number two, focus on a positive thought for 17 seconds in the morning so that it becomes a sticky thought and attracts more positive thoughts. Three, visualize the day you want to create and then take action, right? So there's one thing like think about it, but then you have to take the steps to make it happen. Number four, choose to focus on what you get to do. Remember, G, gratitude, E, enthusiasm, T, treasure. Keep a gratitude journal. Share your appreciation and gratitude with others. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others. You can create a, a ripple effect of gratitude that can actually just go through like the entire teaching uh, staff at, at your school and through the student body. It's, and it can start with one person. That person can be you. And, and I want to conclude. We're going to go to Q&A at the end. And I hope that those of you that are here today uh, feel feel free to ask any questions uh, about anything. Uh, I'd be happy to respond. But I just want to close with one thought. I told you how I woke up this morning and what I said to myself. And I just want to conclude with what I want to share from me to you, which is that you got this. You got this. You can do it. And you can choose to have an upbeat mindset, even in the darkest times. And that you are a light. You are a light. You are a light in your students' lives. And they need you. They need you. Even if they don't show it and their videos are off and you haven't heard from them in three months, they need you. Our communities need you. Our society needs you. And our world needs you. So thank you so much for what you do in the lives of students, spreading the joy and sharing the joy of music and passing it on. I'm sharing my, my contact information with you. And I know uh, my website, upbeatglobal.com is in the chat, but feel free to reach out via email at matthew at upbeatglobal.com or Instagram at upbeat.global or Facebook. My business page is Upbeat Global. And I'd love for you to also join uh, my community, which is a Facebook page called a Facebook group called Upbeat Leaders, right? And, and over 1,000 music educators are, are members of this page, and you will love it. It is so uplifting. It's all about lifting educators and gratitude and joy and positivity. If you're looking for a landing place to go to daily for inspiration, I encourage you to go there. I'd also love for you to to join my mailing list, uh, which is shares uh, blogs in addition to the smart music blogs, other blogs that I'm sharing and, and just keeps you up to date on upbeat global activities for you. And of course I do so many events for students around the country and around the world for, for leadership, for mindfulness, for recharging, for positivity and mindset. So just, uh, I'm, I really hope that this has been helpful and uplifting uh, for all of you and, and maybe given, Giving everybody here a pathway forward to choose an upbeat mindset uh, during these downbeat times. I, I had talked about the, the power of reading uh, positive works. And so I, I know I, I just thought I'd, I have a couple here just to share with you if you're looking for things to, to keep that positivity going. So here's Broadcasting Happiness by Michelle Galan, which is fantastic. Um, if you want to explore mindfulness and meditation, here's a great book by uh, Thich Nhat Hanh um, called Peace is Every Step. And just uh, like a one, one, two page chapters. There's things like, um, my, uh, like you can be mindful with a telephone call or mindful in your car. And, and then I wanted to just share for those of you that haven't read mindset by Carol Dweck. Uh, this is really, really powerful about growth mindset. And if you want to explore the idea of mindfulness for teachers, here's a great book by Patricia Jennings. It's called mindfulness for teachers, Patricia Jennings. And uh, here's another really uplifting one called 10 Mindful Minutes by Goldie Hahn, who's a, a huge supporter of mindfulness, actually an incredible writer, um, in addition, of course, to being the great actress. And then uh, this, this book is, is really great called Mindfulness for Beginners by John Kabat-Zinn. So I just wanted to, to share those. Those are just some resources. I know that one of the questions I get is, hey, Dr. Rao, what are some, some books that you recommend? So I thought I would just share some right off the bat. Um, I do want to let everybody know that if you go to upbeatglobal.com, my website, 
and you go to the media section, you'll have a, a list of, you'll see articles, blogs, podcasts, video casts, and, and, and so many resources there that you can uh, really dive into this and continue to learn and, and get more and more. And so I, I do hope that our paths cross again, virtually online, or if you want to reach out to me at Matthew at upbeatglobal.com, I'd love to hear from you. And of course, I'd love for you to join our community, Upbeat Leaders, on the Facebook group. So this has just been amazing. I hope uh, it has been as valuable uh, for you and uh, has been a positive experience for you. It's certainly been a positive experience for me. And I just want to thank everybody for the encouragement in the chat along the way. It's so much, you know how difficult it is sometimes to be giving all you got to your computer, right? And being like, uh, you know, it's it's so different from the, the live version, but with you here side by side with me, cheering me on along the way, it's really lifted my spirits. So I just want to share my gratitude with you. And Thank I'll turn you. it back over to me. Thank you so much again for being with us today. This was a wonderful and encouraging, uplifting session I think we all needed. So thank you all for being here today. We will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.